Okay, thank you very much. Um, my name is Martin Hoskin. I'm a VMware employee. Um, I'm here today to talk about VMware Cloud and AWS and the partner ecosystem around that. So probably the majority of you should um, Andy Jesse and Pat Gelsinger this morning talking about VMware Cloud on AWS, AWS Outpost, and lots of intri you know, joint projects that VMware and AWS are now involved in, uh, involved in. At the core of that is VMware Cloud on AWS. But what is key and what I'm going to really talk about today is the partner opportunity around that. So what a lot of people are not realizing is that between 30 and 40% of the com consumption of VMware Cloud and AWS is partner driven. So we've got partners like Rackspace, Fujitsu, DXC, who are deploying their customers on this solution. And that's really the, the basis for the next 20 minutes, 25 minute talk that I'm going to do. So this is me, if you are Martin Hoskin. I'm based in the UK, but I'm in a global team, so I, I literally get to go all over the world continuously. I'm an author, v, double VCDX as well, if you know what that means. Um, I'm also AWS certified as well. So, I got okay, just bear with us a second. Will we? Uh, Okay, yeah, so as I was saying, I'm author, VCDX, et cetera, so um, I've been around VMware for quite a long time, and uh, I'm now focused on VMware Cloud and AWS and the partner routes to market for, for that solution. So really, service providers have transformed over the last few years. Five, six years ago, well, I actually worked for a service provider maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, it was all about just presenting IaaS, compute, storage, networking services, for companies that didn't want the hassle of provisioning themselves. Since then, things have moved on dramatically. Service providers are now at the core of many enterprises and the services they run. They're providing complex application services, maybe managed services particularly, and also maybe even virtual CTO services. So you know, helping enterprise customers navigate the complicated world of IT as it is now. So service providers are at the core of many enterprises, and as we can see, here, in this, in this table from uh, an IDC report in 2017, 85% of enterprises have at least one cloud provider vendor that they work with, and 40% have more, four or more cloud providers that they work with. So managed services for cloud providers is, on the grow, uh, is growing, and we'll, we'll look at some of those numbers in a moment towards the end of this, this presentation. But what everyone wants is this concept of hybrid cloud. Now, the word hybrid, probably one of the most overused terms in, in technology and IT these days, it means different things to different people. Sometimes when I go and talk to partners, I talk about a hybrid cloud being a VMware to VMware cloud and you know, having that hybridity and, and the workload mobility between two different locations. But more and more now I'm talking about a hybrid cloud in terms of VMware and another cloud. And predominantly that's AWS, of course, because of this partnership between VMware and AWS. So bringing together the best, really, from the VMware's platform, the 20-year-old history of a, VMware, of a VMware infrastructure, around 85 million workloads running globally, 4,500 service providers, around 70, um, say 570,000 customers in total, a huge ecosystem of VMware, and bringing that together with what really is well established as the best public cloud platform, the scalability and the flexibility of consumption through AWS. So bringing those best of two worlds and those best of our technologies to, together. So before we start talking about the partner um, ecosystem and how this works with the, from a partner perspective, let's just make sure everyone's on board with what VMware, sorry, VMware Cloud and AWS is. It is effectively a bare metal service, an EC2 bare metal service from AWS that VMware are automatically provisioning a fully managed service on top of. So deploying a hypervisor, the, the, the vCenter servers, maybe the PKS services or the site recovery service on top of an EC2 bare metal service. Because it is VMware, it, we get this consistency and familiarity. If you can manage a normal VMware environment today through vCenter or vRealize Automation, vCloud Director, et cetera, then you can manage this environment. It is exactly the same technology with a few little tweaks around the edges of it to make it specific to this type of environment. That gives us, of course, easy workload portability. We have a tool called HCX that allows us to migrate, live migrate bulk workloads 
and provision those workloads and move them from point A to point B, seamlessly migrating from either an on-premise or a partner data center into this platform. But what is key here and what is absolutely unique here is this, the direct access to AWS native services. So this 25 gig near zero latency link between this VMware platform, which lives of course in EC2, and native services, whether they're S3, whether they're RDS, whatever they might be natively in AWS, you can consume those services alongside a VMware platform. And that is the USP. That's a unique part of this service. So breaking that down is what it looks like, a little bit like here from a graphic perspective. Here we have our cloud provider. It could be an on-premise data center or a cloud provider data center. We've got a hybrid link mode between these vCenters linking them together to this VMware cloud on AWS. We can see across the bottom, the orange here is the VMware platform sitting on AWS infrastructure. And then we've got that, that interconnect that I just mentioned a moment ago, 25 gig, near zero latency on most services into the AWS services. On top of that, what our partners bring to the table is management and professional services. AWS offer hundreds of very complicated services. VMware is a, is a well-established platform, but again, complicated application architectures, lifecycle management. All this brings together complexity of management from a, comple from a connectivity, storage, DR, backup, migration, whatever those services are, we can bring those services together and cloud providers and service providers and solution providers, whether they're VMware focused or whether they're AWS focused, are able to offer services around this, bringing it all together as a holistic view of effectively. So we can see here, the provider is able to provision the SDDCs, the software defined data centers, living on the AC2 service. They can manage the billing, or well, they do manage the billing in fact, they manage all the support of this, whilst at the end of the day, the consumer basically gets self-service provisioning of SDDCs. This is all on demand and fully elastic compute, being able to scale compute resources up and down as we need them from a, from a resource perspective. So what sort of services are we talking here? So, so data center migration, of course, lift and shift workloads from one place to another. Maybe you've got a data center that needs a significant CapEx investment. New cooling, new, new racks, new hardware, new storage, new compute, etc. And that's, that's, you know, your estimates are 9, 10, 12 million dollars to do that. You do not want to keep that data center going anymore. You want to OPEX that cost. You want to migrate that data center to a VMware Cloud and AWS platform. A partner can help you do that. They can do all the analytics, looking at the, you know, the, um, the applications and, and how your applications are configured and make a plan or develop a plan with you to migrate those applications. DR as a service, so integrated into VMware Cloud and AWS is what we call site recovery service. This is basically a VMware platform called Site Recovery Manager, but we're delivering it as a service in this solution. That can, again can be managed and planned and designed by partners. Development, test environments, capacity on demand, data protection solutions that use S3 as the end point for, for those protections. A whole range of different types of solutions and we'll, we'll drill into a few of these, those in a little bit more detail in a moment. But a partner has two options. They can resell or they can package as a managed service. So most of our partners have both options available to them. If they resell the solution, of course typically the margins are narrower, but VMware bills the customer directly, the support is owned by VMware, the terms of service are owned by VMware. When a partner offers managed services as part of this platform, which is really becoming the most common approach from our partners over the last 12, 18 months, the partner owns the billing to the end consumers, they own the terms of service and they own the support. So whether you're working with Rackspace, whether you're working with Fujitsu, DXC, they, as the partner, own all those different aspects of this. And I won't drill through all of these because I think you'll have access to these slides later on. But, but effectively, there's two different models and they are really different from the perspective of a partner. How does this work from a partner operational perspective? So, let me just go over this side. So, effectively, a partner has a unique construct in VMware Cloud and AWS called a master organization. That links to a VMware service, it's a SaaS service that we run called CloudHub. And that allows the partners to provision and manage multiple tenants from a single control plane. 
So once the partner is enrolled in the service, they're able to access CloudTab, they're able to create their own master organization, and then they're able to onboard their tenants and provision tenant day, their organizations, provision different SDDCs for each tenant, up to 10 SDDCs, up to 320 nodes per SDDC. So we have really significant scalability here. Alongside that, they're able to provide governance, security operations, managed services and professional services as a package. So from an access control perspective, the master organization is almost like the root account, if you like, and all the permissions and, and privileges populate downwards. So the master organization is where the provider, the, the, um, the service provider, the cloud provider, does their operational management, uh, giving them access to all these different environments, and privileges and, and roles can be also be assigned further down for those tenants to access as well. So if you want to be able to give it, you want to, you don't have to, give access to vCenter to the tenant, you can do it on a tenant by tenant basis, and even on a SD, SDDC by SDDC basis as well. How does the, the operational model work? Well, you can see here, as I mentioned a moment ago, the partner owns the terms of service and support when we're talking about the MSP model. That's different from the retail model, retail model or the resell model for this platform. So as part of the, as part of the, um, the contract for an MSP partner, they take on the terms of service and the support for first line support. So, and of course they have a significant discounts as part of the service in order to do that as well. So, um, tier one support is handled by the partner. So really from an end consumer perspective, all their interaction is with the partner. If they need to escalate from a partner perspective, they're able to escalate to VMware for tier support, two support. Of course VMware support the VMware stack. And then if it's a hardware related issue or a VPC related issue, that gets escalated to Amazon for, for the third tier tier support. So managed services, there is a growing market there. Um, and this has been growing over the last 10 of years or so. So we can see here some, you know, some figures from various reports that the total addressable market is growing year by year. And that really opens up a huge range of opportunity for partners, whether they want to offer, you know, digital services or, or, or site recovery services, whatever they want to be, offering these add-on services on top of just a bare, a bare platform, if you like, is where they're able to make far greater margins than just selling effectively basic IaaS and an IaaS-based platform. So just drilling, that into, drilling down into that, those numbers in a little bit more detail, we can see here that the margins are able to build up gradually. The more complicated the service, the more complicated the managed services, the professional services around it, the higher the margins are. My team actually have, offer accelerated services to partners and help them to build the business plan around this and look at these margins in far more detail. But from a professional services perspective, really you know, assessing, planning, designing, uh, designing the security with NSX, micro-segmentation, the load balances offered, load balancing solutions offered to the VMware platform. Also, application assessment and understanding the customer's application, helping them migrate that application onto VMware Cloud and AWS. Building a full portfolio of professional services around these offerings. So here we have just a few of the examples. At the last count at, at VMworld a few weeks, well, a couple of months ago in August, we had 160 or so partners, so I'm sure that number is, uh, has increased since then. But we've got some very familiar names, and a number of our partners really now deploy multiple customers on this service and taking more of an asset light approach to their infrastructure. So, just taking this to the next step, what are these types of services that are unique to VMware Cloud and AWS? So, Application migrations, geographic expansion is a key one for many partners. So if we've got a partner that's based in the US, for example, and they've got customers who want to deploy infrastructure in Sydney, in Tokyo, we can get that infrastructure up and running in around an hour, an hour and 20 minutes. You can deploy full SDDCs in a fully automated manner in around an hour and 20 minutes anywhere in the world. So you no longer have to be bound to where your data center locations are in the US, in Europe, or wherever. You can actually expand into multiple geo, um, geo, geos. And by the end of 2019, in every location that Amazon have a data center region, this service will be available. Today, it's available in the US, East Coast, West Coast, in Europe, in, 
uh, London, Frankfurt, Dublin, in Sydney, and Tokyo, and Osaka is coming online shortly. Also, Singapore is coming online just after Christmas. Vertical extension, so compliance. Again, this is key for many end customers having to meet certain compliance standards um, you know, in the healthcare business, in, in financial services. These platforms have been verified and, and in each region been certified on relevant compliance um, uh, solutions, whatever, whatever they might be for that region. So the, that takes that, that consideration and that factor away from the end cons consumer. Disaster recovery. As I mentioned uh, earlier on, we have Site Recovery Service, which is effectively Site Recovery Manager, the product Site Recovery Manager running as a service. But what makes it quite unique is the Elastic Compute and Storage Platform. So you can run a small um, pilot light environment of, of, of a minimum of three hosts, actually, it has to be, for the vSAN cluster to work and operate. But you can then expand that on demand in a DR scenario. So you could be protecting maybe 10,000, 20,000 workloads with a really small cluster. In a DR scenario, you can expand that cluster rapidly within minutes, adding additional 10, 15 nodes, whatever you need, and fail those workloads over to that new cluster that's been expanded. So really, from a site recovery perspective and a disaster recovery perspective, some real economic benefits of running in this platform. Elastic scalability, of course, adding, removing host on demand, paying for what you consume on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. So that really takes that cloud economics of AWS and brings it to a VMware platform. And as we mentioned earlier on, lift and shift, literally just closing your data center, moving the workload somewhere else. And we've seen a number of customers working with our partners to take that approach as well. So I'll just build, I'll just build this out. So this just separates the pre-sales opportunity from the post-sales opportunity. So different ways that you can monetize this service as a partner. So assess, design, and provision the service, of course, all that's a part of a pre-sales opportunity. And then long-term management and the transformation of your applications is a post-sale um, you know, engagement and, and part of the, you know, part of the customer partner relationship. So just looking at a few examples, so this is the site recovery service I mentioned a few times. So we've got workloads running on an on-premise data center. That data has been replicated to VMware Cloud and AWS. And in a DR scenario, those workloads would fail over. But as I said, we can maintain a minimal footprint, a pilot-like environment here on the VMware Cloud and AWS site. So we can protect potentially thousands of workloads with a really small footprint. When that DR scenario occurs and we hit that button, we can add hosts dynamically and elastically scale that cluster to meet the requirements for all of those workloads. And that's really unique from a site recovery and a DR perspective. Here's another example of a managed service. This is application, so we've got ingress traffic into an elastic load balancer across two availability zones, but these web apps that are running in these, um, in these two availability zones in the AWS infrastructure, the native AWS infrastructure, are talking to applications and databases that are running on the VMware platform. So this might be a transitionary type of um, idea where we're moving applications into native AWS, but we're gradually transitioning those applications over to that platform. So it doesn't matter whether it's a long-term strategy or a short-term strategy from, a, from an application transformation perspective. You're able to run these ha hybrid applications across these two different environments. And the partner is able to op you know, offer the application design, application performance, co cost monitoring, et cetera, reporting, application lifecycle management, patching, et cetera. Finally, HCX is, part, is bundled with VMware Cloud and AWS. It is a migration tool that actually allows you to migrate workloads either live or offline into this platform. So you can do bulk vMotion, moving workloads from point A to point B. So it works very, very effectively, and it's a very, very simple tool to use. But effectively, we just build networks, we build a tunnel, all fully automated within HCX, no requirement for NSX on, on, the, um, on the source side, it automatically builds that tunnel through the HCX appliance. We build the logical networks, the VXLAN networks or the uh, Genève networks. We've, in this case, we've got a three-tier application, so we're moving our database over first, of course. We're allowing the application to replicate and make sure that all, uh, all the um, 
uh, the, 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 the database uh, application is up to date. We can then, and there's a little bit of animation here, we can then migrate those workloads, moving the app tier over, then we can move that web tier over, and then when we're ready, and the application is now running on the new side, we can decommission the database, delete, mm, sorry, decommission that database, delete that data, and we fully now move this application over to VMware Cloud and AWS. So this tool, HCX, is bundled with VMware Cloud and AWS. There's no additional cost for it, and it is really a game changer from a workload mobility perspective. So just summarizing, VMware have thousands of partners. We have over 4,500 cloud provider partners. We have SISO partners, solution provider partners. Many of those are now buying into this as a, as a solution, as an asset light solution, that they're able to provision workloads, and uh, sorry, provision uh, software defined data centers anywhere across the globe and provision workloads on them and manage those workloads for their end consumers. No requirement for them to have their own data center. So just a summary here of an autonomy of what makes a good, sorry, a good service provider, of course, they need to get that customer up and running. They need to keep that customer up and running. They provide you know, consistent operational excellence. They provide the skills that maybe the customer doesn't have themselves. And at the end of the day, they're packaging things as a service. So my team run partner acceleration programs in order to bring our partners online. And I spent the last year going around the world working with some of our key partners, some of them we've seen on the list earlier on today, on bringing them online to actually deliver these services. So we've called this our AWS Partner Acceleration Program. And my team, the Global Cloud Practice at VMware, run this, 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 this program. So we will work with our partners and we will, and we will look at the market opportunity in that region. We will build, help them build a business case, look at the margins, and help them bring on board their initial customers as well. We'll help them develop their offering. Is it basic IaaS? Are they offering container services, site recovery services? Are they doing migration services? We will help them develop that alongside professional services. Migration is a key one that often gets offered through professional services. And then help them build operational run books for the managed service side of things, ensuring that they can manage this environment. And as I said at the very beginning, this is just VMware. So if you're familiar with VMware, we are, you know, this is, there's nothing new here to, to learn effectively. Um, they can help build, we can help build your own cloud practice. You can be part of a program that, allow, that, that VMware sales reps can direct customers directly to the partner. So if VMware see opportunities with partners from a VMware Cloud and AWS perspective or any other service for that perspective, VMware sales reps can actually direct um, those opportunities to the partner. We'll help with a go-to-market plan and, and that, that seems to have frozen up again, but uh, oh, and it'll help develop the business plan, as I said, ready for that go-to-market. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm going to stick around here for 10, 15 minutes. If you want to have a chat with me around this, happy to have that conversation. If you want our, some of our teams to reach out to you around becoming an MSP, if any of you are partners, currently AWS partners, and they're looking to add this to your portfolio, which a number of already have. I think we've got quite a few dozen native AWS partners already signed up to add this as an additional offering to their, serv to their service portfolio. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the